Okay, good morning everyone. Um, I know I'm going to be leading us into lunch here soon, so I'll try not to take too long here. But I'll just go through um, high level my report that's included in the AGA report that's available at the front, pages 9 to 11. And first of all, I just want to acknowledge um, the current chief and council. Each and every one of the members bring a different skill set and a level of knowledge to our table and bring balance. You've heard from each and every one of them the different roles and, and work that we each carry out to support each other collectively for the best interests of our community. So I'm very thankful to each and every one of them for their work and I really want to, um, I'll wait till she gets back, <laughs> but Jackie. And like, I also want to thank all our staff. Um, a lot of the topics that I'll be speaking to, uh, it really is the work of our staff on the ground, our moccasins on the ground, doing a lot of the work and, and keeping leadership informed on their concerns, what they're seeing in the field, how they could be supported. And our role as council is to be that advocate to, to to save our fight for, you know, the the mountaintop, for those industry, for the government, and support our staff where we can, if it's through funding, if it's through um, policy or legislative changes, that's where we come in to support. Not to interfere with staff operations, we have to trust our staff to do their job, and I'm very thankful for all your hard work. I know it's a thankless job at many times working for your own community, and as much as we say we want our own people in community holding these jobs, it's one of the toughest. Um, I'll say that. So I really appreciate everyone, you know, from our finance, our lands department, all the different departments who work collectively to make our community grow and I hope what you gather from the reports and the two days of AGA that's happening you'll see the growth that's occurred coming from a place of uh, I don't want to say wallowing but you know feeling the brunt impacts of colonialism and coming into a place of growth and and honoring our resiliency as a community I think that's very important to recognize so as others have mentioned, we're out coming out of the pandemic. We still have to be concerned and, and watch out for each other's safety, but we're able to gather now. We're able to come together, hear the concerns, hear solutions. And I think, you know, it's easy for each and every one of us. It's the easiest thing to complain. The hardest part is showing up and bringing those solutions and finding ways that we can work together. So I really thank those putting in the work and the effort and holding their weight to bring some of those solutions that we can consider um, amongst ourselves. So under the strategic framework that Council adopted in 2017, um, my area is environmental stewardship. So I look after um, matters related to lands and resources, but also in relation to that, there's economic development opportunities, um, employment and training, where it kind of intersects with one another. So I work with different staff um, within our band office to support different initiatives in those areas. Some of the major files that I've been involved in, um, I'll provide a, a forestry update, just a few slides. I'll go into some of the growing pains that we've experienced with the province and, and where we are today, not only as SICAs, but as the collective Carrier Sikani First Nations. Um, I'll describe a little bit of the engagement with some of the major licensees, the Canfors, Nichaco, we've partnered with, um, and also how we're trying to move forward to address concerns that we have with some of these major uh, licensees, the mills, and how they operate on our land, and how we're trying to balance our economic interests, but also ensure that our values as Saikaswata and as Carrier Sikani are being adhered to in terms of stewardship. I want to um, just really give kudos to our staff, um, Cassandra, Cora, and others and to our knowledge holders and our clan leaders for the Traditional Governance Oversight Committee that's been established. And this is really trying to find a way forward to bring our hereditary clan system uh, in a process to work with our elected chief and council system. 
because chief and council system is a colonially imposed system that was not originally our way. So we're trying to find ways where they can work together and that we can be making better decisions about our land base as a whole. So finding ways uh, to move forward and make plans around restoration activities, areas to conserve, or maybe areas that we give our consent to allow harvesting, for example. So there's a lot of different interconnecting work and our staff have been doing amazing work and I just really commend you. One of the committees that I sit on, I also sit on many committees, I sit on a joint management committee for oversight on our agreement with Nechaco Lumber. So we did sign a 10-year agreement in 2019. And within that committee work, we oversee three main components of our agreement. You know, we want to look at the economic aspect. Are we getting, you know, appropriate revenue from the resources being harvested in our territory? Uh, we oversee employment and training um, aspects. So say a staff member at the mill has a concern, you know, or there's an issue around HR, um, it's raised to our attention and we, we bring it to management of the company and say, hey, like, you know, are, is there cultural sensitivity in place? Are your management and staff um, aware of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in terms of you know, addressing systemic racism potentially in your operation. So we look at those types of elements. And an important component is around environmental stewardship. So really trying to ensure that their lands, people within the mill are working um, meaningfully with our own staff, our, our manager, Cassandra, and our environmental monitors. At the beginning of the agreement, we did have a um, positive start with with the staff working with their staff working with ours there has been some change um, in their staff at the mill so really trying to onboard them establish new relationships again so that we can maintain um, the partnership that we have with Nachaco and use it as a model for other licensees like Hanfor um, for example who hasn't been um, engaging with our community in meaningful ways for many years. Currently, we do have a small license for harvesting with Canfor, so there's a minimal amount of harvesting activities that we have consented to, um, but the majority of harvesting activities that are authorized in Sykes territory is with our partner, Nechaco Lumber. So um, otherwise, no other licensees like BC timber sales, etc., are authorized to harvest in our territory without our consent. Over the past year, um, we were able to stop Canfor from logging um, without our consent for over a year, and I think it was a, a major milestone in terms of, you know, us putting our foot down. We've seen the devastation occurring out on our territory. We do know our moose populations are in decline, our fisheries populations are getting worse, and trying to find measures through you know, different avenues that Jackie has mentioned, for example, to improve those resources. So really trying to look at the multiple industries that are occurring and seeing how they can impact us um, in different ways and trying to, to manage to the best that we can the impacts associated from those developments. So I did speak a little bit about um, Canfor. Um, it was a, a really hostile relationship over the past few years, but we're now in a place where some activity is being authorized. Collectively, with the Carrier Sikani First Nations, um, there is alignment um, between the seven First Nations that are affiliated with CSFN. So there's Saikas, Nodlewatens, the Latin, Tsilkazko, which is Burns Lake, Nakazli, Tlazden, and Takla Lake. So our communities, regardless of our, our different differences, politically or geographically, we've really raised the standards in terms of putting our efforts to fight the province, essentially, but trying to shift that from a fight to a collaboration and working together. So 
We have been successful on some fronts to ensure that uh, stewardship measures are being adhered to. I'll show a few slides in relation to that. And um, I'll also share a few slides on some of the work that I also do with the First Nations Major Projects Coalition. You heard Jackie talk about a project that we're exploring as Nechaco nations. So we have Saikas, Notle, Stilata, and Cheslata who are partnering together to look at an economic development project, not only to pursue revenue from a hydropower project, but really the primary goal is to bring the water back to the Nechaco. And a lot of our efforts have been trying to uh, restore you know, the 70% the of flow that's been taken from our river and bring it back to life. So Jackie mentioned some of the other benefits associated with that project, you know, to alleviate the flooding happening in Cheslata territory with their graveyards flooding. I know some of our ancestors are under that reservoir as well, but to really find projects that meet our values around stewardship and to bring bring our river back to life. There's many different um, projects and initiatives being pursued to help do that. Um, so I'll, I'll share a little bit about that. And just some of the other roles that I've played, um, that I've held on council. I was a board of director for the BC First Nations Technology Council, so really trying to advocate for you know, the 204 First Nations in BC to ensure that there is accessibility to um, internet, to the technology required to manage our own data systems so that we can create programming, et cetera, to what our needs are in community. So um, that term I just finished, but um, just really recognizing how important technology was during the pandemic and, and just really thankful to our staff to offer the technology even for this event and for others. You know, I appreciate that accessibility and, and hopefully our members will have access to this and these recordings. Um, there has been other general governance uh, matters that all of our council are involved in, if it's related to child welfare, housing, rights and title interests, we all come together to bring our different perspectives and our strengths and our voices to advocate on those issues. So it really is a team effort in a lot of these different areas. I have supported the education committee and I really am I'm proud of all those who are taking initiative to um, seek further education and hopefully we can bring our members back to our community and bring those skill sets for the benefit of our members. Again, um, trying to address some of the barriers for our members to come back home. As I'm sure many of you have noticed, the, the housing um, multiple housing projects and renovations that are being conducted. That's been a long time coming. You know, our community hasn't seen this many builds in, you know, over 20 years. So it's uh, a lot of work from the staff and a, a lot of um, a lot of effort goes into that. But we still have a long way to go. But there are measures being taken to improve housing, to improve the ability to bring our members home, and I just thank all those who are, um, who recently graduated. We have Cora, we have Cassandra, just, well, not just, but a few years ago. But we are bringing our members home, and I'm thankful that you've chosen to come back to our community. Um, again, it's not easy to work for your own members. I've supported different staff interview panels. Again, we have many of our members coming home, and that's amazing. And I also acknowledge all those who aren't our members who do uh, tireless, and hard work for our members, even though they, they might, not, might not be from here, their heart is here and they still show up every day to do the best work that they can for our community. So I acknowledge you as well. There are many other business and economic opportunities that are before us. Um, you've heard reference to the economic development uh, component uh, within our Pathways Forward 2.0 agreement. And um, there has been, revenues 
shared to the different CSFN communities to support economic development, and it did take some time for CICAs to receive ours, and now we have to create processes and infrastructure and do that community engagement to define how these funds will be distributed. Um, I think it's gonna take a community effort to, to decide how that's gonna be, be done, if it's majority being saved for community-based um, businesses or projects and maybe exploring a certain percentage for individuals and entrepreneurs. I think we have that opportunity before us to figure out how these funds can be distributed. So there's many opportunities ahead of us and it's, it's always uh, a challenge waiting, but the changes are coming and the opportunities are, are before us. Um, I, I also really want to thank Cora McIntosh for, for joining our organization as our general manager. Um, just acknowledging the amazing work you do to date and it doesn't go unnoticed and um, I'm just very proud of, of all our staff and our members for uh, contributing to those solutions, contributing to this place that you know, we call home. And Jackie, um, I've had the honor and privilege of serving my third term with you, and I've had many years before that um, the privilege to have your mentorship. And <clears throat> just acknowledging you and Oh, my late Uncle Stanley as some of my biggest mentors and those gifts that you've shared, your successes, but also your challenges. I know it's not easy, but it's been so amazing. The work that you've done over the years, it changed history. <laughs> it changed the world <laughs> in so many different ways and people don't recognize that. When we look at the fight we conducted um, with Enbridge, fighting Northern Gateway, that was practice. That was practice to where we are today in dealing with Alcan, dealing with the historical impacts of that development. And yes, all those things of historical compensation, restoring the river, all those are being considered and um, they don't go unnoticed. And I'm just so thankful that we had, you know, the muscle and the heart of, of Jackie and other leaders, other past members of Chief and Council who have contributed and gave their lives for our community. I know many of us can, can take our skills and our knowledge anywhere else, go to Victoria, go to Ottawa, but you know, for some, it's a choice to stay here, to bring that heart, that knowledge, that skill set, that muscle for our members. Even if our own members don't see it or recognize it or acknowledge it, because hurt people will hurt people, but I think we're on that path to healing and reconciliation, not only amongst ourselves, but with others who are guests in our territory as well. Um, just uh, also wanted to mention in relation to the Nechaco River, we are working on a full length documentary film in partnership with the National Film Board. I just got notice uh, last month that we did receive all our funding required to, to make the film. So we are starting production um, within the next few weeks and there, has, there will be um, advisory committees um, established within SICAS, but also with our partner community in Stilaten to help guide the making of this movie to ensure that our, our elders, our knowledge holders um, are having a contribution to the film that will tell the world what we've been going through. This is what we've struggled with, but here's our aspirations as well. There's many amazing things, not just that hurt and grief and pity and sorrow, but we're still beautiful, strong, resilient people, and we wanna show the world that we, we do amazing work regardless of our challenges. Um, I do see questions, so I think our facilitator will be taking notes of who's up, but I'll just share. Um, just quickly, uh, I did mention we are trying to work towards a resource management plan for not only uh, SICA's territory, but for the broader Carrier Sikani First Nations as well. Um, this did start, um, 
we're all aware of the impacts we've seen to our forests, the effects of mountain pine beetle, forest fires. Um, we have been working with the licensees. They have come kicking and screaming, some of them, but some willingly to the table to work with the Carousa County First Nations and with the province as well. This journey is still ongoing. Um, we're in a process right now to where the licensees have been uh, ordered to cease harvesting in really high biodiverse areas within our territories collectively. We're working, um, our staff in our different communities have been working very hard to try to identify areas where some of these licensees can harvest. Um, so it is taking a lot of different work. And hopefully within the next two years, I'll just say we'll, we'll have more um, uh, regional planning efforts so that we can identify as CICAs, as CSFNs, where we authorize harvesting, but more importantly, where we are saying you can't even touch this area. And for our own reasons, culturally, spiritually, for harvesting purposes, that'll be up to us. Um, next one, and just uh, wrap up with uh, a little bit on that NATU project. That's going to be a project that the Nechako Nations I mentioned, the four communities are interested in pursuing as a project on our own, and part of that is um, some of the changes that are occurring at the federal level to uh, review major projects. In the past, um, cultural rights weren't considered. So, you know, we have said in other impact assessment processes like with Enbridge, you know, you're going to impact our cultural rights, there's spiritual uh, sites that you're, you're going to impact. And right now we're trying to uh, create new tools to um, show those impacts to those cultural rights and um, define our own values whether it's for cultural harvesting, whatever that might be. Um, there's going to be a different process. <laughs> and just to mention, there's going to be some community engagement following up to this project specifically, another advisory committee. So there's going to be lots of opportunities for engagement um, on different projects that you've heard about um, from council. And for us to, to take, take charge and have a say over our resources. So I think I got it right till 12 o'clock, but um, I'll leave that there. <laughs> Lots going on, thanks.